Hello there. This was actually the first weekend in a while in which I didn't record any YouTube videos at all. No Better Call Saul, no Attack on Titan, no films, nothing. Because there's three reasons for that. A, on Friday, I had a law presentation in which I had to do like an adjournment for a case at one of the mock trials at uni. So I channeled my inner Jimmy McGill and, you know, rocked up, fully dressed and things like that. That was pretty cool. The thing is, on that Friday, straight after the assessment, Spider-Man 2 released on Friday. So I went home, rewarded myself after finishing my assessment, played about six hours on the Friday. And then on Saturday, I played about 10 hours, finished the main story. Like, uh, oh, that, that 10 hours on Saturday, uh, this is going to sound like a virgin thing. But listen, it was one of the best experiences I've had in a while. Gaming does that to you. If it's the right game, immerses you into its world and you just zone out. So on Saturday, it was a hot day. It was 32 degrees. Didn't decide to go out. I was like, you know what? Stay at home in the aircon and just play all day. It's a Saturday. We finished the assessment and finished the letter I had to do after it. So why not? Why not? And then the other thing is I'm a bit ahead of schedule in terms of recording and uploading with Better Call Saul. So we're having fun with that anyway. And you guys are absolutely fantastic. So what's going on, guys? My name's Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law official here from Sydney, Australia. Shitty shot, baby. We are watching Better Call Saul for the first time, and today we are up to episode 7 of season 2, titled Inflatable. My aim today is to be very productive and finish the rest of season 2 in one recording, so four episodes in a row, um, and you'll see me dressed in probably the same clothing, hence finishing the four videos, if I get it done. So yeah, episode 7, Inflatable, let's waste no more time, let's get into it, let's have some fun, let's go. I can't believe that was Ken from freaking Breaking Bad. Like, you guys pointed that out. I was like, oh. Flashback sequence. Is this young Jimmy working at his dad's store, the supermarket? I mean, he's reading a Playboy magazine. Yep. Sweeping <laughs> going. Going good, Pop. It's a ripoff, just like that bum from last week. Jimmy. Every grifter in town knows that this is the spot to come for an easy handout. Grifter, where in the world did she learn? <laughs> His story's baloney. He probably doesn't even have a son. He's conning you. Even young Jimmy knows. Jimmy. Young Jimmy knows. What if you're wrong? <sighs> you know what? Sorry to bother you folks. I'm gonna get out of here. I'm, I'm gonna... No, 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 no. Dad. No, no bother. Come on, now, here. There's $10 for you. Sorry, you're... That's... That is so generous. Of course, and, and you know what? I'm gonna go back in the stock room. I'm gonna find those spark plugs. Maybe we'll get your car started for you, okay? Come on, Jimmy, just man the till, okay? And I'll just be back in a jiff. Jimmy about to have a 1v1 with this guy. See, you immediately, you help people out like that. If people take advantage of your kind heart um, and good nature, especially in a small town like this. And I realized, like, I love seeing the recurring characters come in from Breaking Bad because it is a small town and you see them come into play. It's not like the Star Wars universe where they, I feel like in my opinion, they, um, they, they, they bad, like, uh, they sort of, um, they clam themselves into a creative bubble, in my opinion. Like, the galaxy is so big, but we still see the same recurring characters. But that's because it's a galaxy so big. Like, explore more, if you get what I mean. Here, it makes sense. Like, I feel like it makes sense seeing those recurring characters and things like that. But, yeah, I feel like in a small town like this, um, if some people, like, grif grifters, um, see that this guy, um, Jimmy's dad, has a kind heart and people take advantage of his good nature, word will spread out easily and more people will start doing this. And Jimmy's clearly seen that. And yeah, he sees through the facade. He sees, sees through the fakeness. How much for a car in the cools? Four bucks. Yeah, give me a garden. Money first. <laughs> yeah, 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 prick. You don't want to turn your back on someone like this. That's the problem. Four bucks for that? Damn, that's cheap. Times have changed. <laughs> there are wolves and sheep in this world, kid. Wolves and sheep. Figure out which one you're going to be. 
You know what? The world is a savage place, and that guy it might be a right lesson to tell the kid. Okay, I, I found the. Uh, did he leave? Or did we just leave? Sir! Man, Chicago Bears in the background, really? 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 <laughs> hey, Seattle Seahawks won today. Whoever's from Arizona, hold it! <laughs> He's decided that he can no longer, in good conscience, claim that the gun found at the scene belonged to Tuco Salamanca. So whose gun was it? Who's to say? You know how many guns there are in Albuquerque? Somewhere between the number of rattlesnakes and grains of sand, so... <laughs> Was it your gun, Mr. Ermintrout? No, he's not saying that. Can we hear it from Mr. Ermintrout? The gun wasn't Salamanca's, that's all I can tell you. You told us it was. You said Salamanca pulled it and pointed it at you. Well, he didn't. Why are you changing your story? Good citizenship. Look, there was only one set of prints <laughs> on the gun, Salamanca's. How's that gonna happen if it wasn't his? That's not really for my client to say now, is it? He's not a forensics expert. Who knows, maybe it, uh, fell from a passing bird's beak and Mr. Salamanca caught it and tried to throw it away. I mean, the possibilities are endless. Does Salamanca threaten you, Mr. Ermintra? Hey, we want to put this guy away for years. The gun makes all the difference, you know that. You're gonna let this person victimize you twice? Forget about the gun, all right? The gun was not Salamanca's. If you try to introduce it in evidence, Mr. Ermintra will make himself available to the defense and he will set the record straight, categorically and unequivocally. You're doing the right thing. The Salamanca character, maniac. I had my own thing with him. I didn't want to say before because in conflict of interest, you <laughs> yeah, he's nuts. Like they say, discretion is the better part of valor. I would have done the same thing. Hey, today, it's on me, no charge. <laughs> You take the next one and bill me. My law school loans. What is that, a couple grand by now? My wish. I had to finance the whole thing. I was only making mailroom money. I've got like 15,000 left. Wow, Schweikert wants you bad, huh? Jimmy, did you have something you needed? No, no, just checking in. Uh, I'll see you later, okay? If you play your cards right. <laughs> hey, that's that's a that's that's a keeper, man. That's what that woman is a keeper. Like she don't make it easy, but like it's a cool challenge. Like it's not like oh she's just like you know not seeing you for the sake of like she doesn't have feelings and things like that. She making it a challenge. Like play your cards right. She playing around. She vibes. She vibes, man. I like it. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people need to play the cards right in this show, Omar, not just for the relationship stuff. <laughs> Omar, would you be so kind as to take a letter for me? Clifford or Cliff? I don't, uh, depends on what the letter is. That's fine, treat yourself. <laughs> uh, dear whoever you put in, continuing. Uh, my heart is heavy as, you know, it sounds like a medical condition. <laughs> Let's go with, um, it is with a heavy heart, okay? It is with a heavy heart that I tender my resignation to Davis and Maine. Wow. Tender is better than submit, yeah? Resignation? Yes, sir. What's wrong? Do you think I'm laying it on too thick? No, um, I just didn't realize how unhappy you were here. Not unhappy, per se. More like not happy. <laughs> I had no idea. It's not your fault, buddy. It's just, you're top notch. Where were we? It's just, you worked so hard to get here. Hey, it's so much to give up. I mean, the perks alone. Yeah, the apartment is, uh, yeah, <laughs> and the car. For the most part, car is pretty sweet. And the bonus? No, oh, the bonus is a done deal. They already cut me the check. I get to keep the bonus. Not if you quit. Before a certain term, I think yours is a year, you have to pay the money back. Suck it up for a year. Suck it up for a year. <laughs> Suck it up for a year and then resign and bring Omar with you. <laughs> so, yeah, there.
<laughs> Didn't read the fine print. Omar, that whole uh, letter of resignation thing that I didn't mean that. Not a word. I don't repeat what I said to anyone. I figured something had to be wrong. I mean, really wrong. Because you like it here, right? I love it. It, call <laughs> it a momentary lapse of reason. But just, let's just rewind the tape and, you know, forget this happened. Mom's the word. No problem. I swear. I if, better already. I, if Aaron's you know, eavesdropping. You say something out loud to hear how crazy it sounds. <laughs> Thank you, Omar. If Aaron's at the door, I'm throwing Iron Man. Okay, we're good. I, I, Iron Man, I didn't have him in my hands at the moment, but he was going. Hey, El Paso! I got cousins there. Like, no lie. <laughs> Inflatable! <laughs> the light bulb just went off in his head. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> Oh man, he's channeling his inner Wilson Fisk right there with all the suits. The same suit. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's what we like to see. Riding that shit up. Just like my microphone. Thanks. All right, let's get started. Hold that. Everyone is uh, everyone is wearing greys and blacks. Let's brighten it up a bit. Let's add a little bit of flair to it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think, is this when we start to get a little bit of the Jimmy transitioning to Saul? Or is that too early? Or are we getting a sprinkle of that Saul personality now? Are we, are we, are we, are, are, are we getting, um, you know, a little bit of a tease? He can wear what he wants. That's <laughs> that's a drippy inflatable right there. Shout out to that inflatable. Let's give him a name. Um, we'll go Terrence. Shout out Terrence. I'm not sure if he's trying everything in his power to get fired. Because um, that's like a way to get around the loophole of the payout. The lump sum. Or he's just, you know. Oh, Don Clifford. Wants his floor clean. clean. Limpia. Limpia. Uh, comprende? Dude, I'm from Michigan. <laughs> so you don't understand a word I've been saying. What? Excuse me. The you amount of takes of attention? suiting up. <laughs> Everyone can hear me? Good. It's been brought to my attention that we have an ongoing situation in the washroom. Someone is not flushing. Once is an accident, maybe even twice, three times, nah, that's a pattern. And we're not talking about a number one. Yes, thank you, Aaron. <laughs> now, I'm not here to shame anyone, nor to even want to know who did it, but... Uh, Cliff, it was me. <laughs> Jimmy, I just said I didn't want to know. <laughs> we need the water. Now, I read somewhere the Santa Fe watershed is down two full inches this year. Every time you flush a toilet, you waste a gallon of water. A gallon? What could be greener than this? The low flow toilets, Jimmy. From now on, flush. He testing. Flow. He testing That's Cliff's patience. Good. Good thinking. <laughs> Ooh, the beige with the salmon. That's gonna be one of the best ones yet. I love that one. Don't tell me you're gonna bring an instrument into the office. Don't you dare. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> the antics are just wait 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 he got a whole choir in there jimmy what's going on in there jimmy oh you can hear this through the door i didn't realize i'm sorry what do you think you're doing I took your advice. I'm blowing off steam. <laughs> blowing off steam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you and your guitar, you know. Uh, the bad I part. Say, you're right. <laughs> I mean, it really helps with stress. I know I don't sound very good, but I'm just learning. I heard that the key is you have to keep this bag inflated. Enough. Put that down. Now, I want you in my office. 
I know he's doing everything in his power to get out of the door, but at the same time, I, I'm actually curious to see how much work is being done because it seems like he's putting more work into his outfits and just creating a nuisance around the office than actually doing work. <laughs> but I guess it's all for the entertainment or the montage and things like that. But yeah, if I had a co-worker like this, I'd be so angry. <laughs> but it brightens up the workplace, hey. I wonder what Omar thinks about this. You win. What do I win? You're fired. Yay! What? Cliff, if this is about the bag, It's not about the bagpipes. It's about you keeping your bonus. That's what this is about. Been brushing up in your contract law, haven't you? <laughs> You're not out of here, clearly. But you can't just up and quit and expect to keep your bonus. And if I fire you for cause, like I should have done for the TV commercial, again, no bonus. However, if I fire you not for cause, but for being an all-around jackass, yeah, hooray for you. If you think there's been some malfeasance here... Oh, save it. I could fight you on this, but you're not worth my time. I'd rather just have you gone. Damn! How much was the desk? $7,000. I'll write you a check. Fine, for whatever good that does. <laughs> Take your desk and get out. Hey, Cliff, for what it's worth, I think you're a good guy. For what it's worth, I think you're an asshole. <laughs> I, I feel bad for Cliff a little bit in terms of like... <laughs> it, obviously, it's entertaining or meant to root for Saul, but I think anyone with like half a brain would have been literally dying to have this job and i think we had that moment in the last episode a couple episodes ago with the guy in the bathroom who saw used to see at the da like every day um and yeah like oh sorry jimmy used to see at the da every day like he would literally bite tooth and nail to get that job and saul's just throwing uh, jimmy's just throwing it away i know he took it on basically kim's words but like he could have played this a bit better um he could have not thrown his toys out the pram, I guess, after the uh, uh, the ad the advertisement the advertising incident. Um, and he could have had a heart to heart and like a man to man conversation with Cliff. Listen, like you know, I effed up with the commercial. That was my bad. Um, I miss like misworded or like sort of misunderstood your judgment and what you handed me and the powers I got. Uh, could you back Aaron down off of me? Like he could have handled it a bit better. Um, I feel like, yeah, this is amusing to see, but in my honest, like, opinion, I don't know if you guys will agree with me, I just feel like he could have handled this better, it's a once-in-a-lifetime job, the perks he gets are unbelievable, but I guess we'll see what's gonna happen, this could be for the better, it could be for the worse, but, yeah, they gave him the world, and, yeah, he threw shit back at him, like, literally, he left the shit in the toilet, <laughs> like, <laughs> nah, piss off, Aaron, piss off. Hey. In the trash, yeah, yeah. I remember she was talking to him about separating the, the rubbish. I guess we've closed the door on that chapter now. It's funny how at the both time, both the same times, Jimmy and Kim are sort of leaving their respective places. And Kim uh, is yeah, sort of writing open. a similar letter to what Jimmy was. Jimmy. But Jimmy got hey, fired. Can I like, talk to you for a minute? Does Howard know you're here? God, no. I snuck in. Please? Ten minutes, tops. I swear, if they bang in the conference... Okay. After you. Like, I didn't want a quick cut or anything. <laughs> Have a seat. What? What is going on? Spill it. That's the deal, yes. Why? Does he want to get... entertain a better offer? Does he want to go there? From whom? HHM? From me. Oh! I'll make you partner tomorrow. Consider that proof of concept. Wexler McGill, partners at law. That's a fire oh, logo. W's, W's all around. W's and M's. Wexler can pay your debt, so can I. And with my signing bonus, you'll have a clean slate. Sky's the limit. Hey, we're good together, you know that. So what's stopping us? Let's jump in with both feet. Be our own bosses, build our own future. What about clients? Mesa Verde just signed with you, didn't they? Oh. It'll be a hard sell to take them with me. So Woo! there will be another Mesa Verde. That was all you, Kim. You did it once, 
you can do it again. This can be a whole lot of blood, sweat, and tears, at least at the start. But in the end, we'll have a practice that is 100% ours. See? That's worth it. This I root for. Remember, we fail and we end up with nothing. Well, you're right. It's a gamble. It's a big one. Yeah, but you're betting on yourself. And from where I sit, the odds are in your favor. You're an amazing lawyer. This is your chance to show the world that. That's a better pitch than Schweikart. <laughs> so why not go to Schweikart? They'll make me partner, and they are a solid, respectable firm. You can't deny that. You deserve more than just a lateral move. If we're going to be law partners, I need to know one thing. Honesty. What kind of lawyer are you going to be? Ooh! I don't mean what kind of law are you going to practice. I mean, are you going to play it straight? But you can't play or it straight. Be colorful. Colorful, man! I'm going to play it straight. No, 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 no. Right nah, down nah. the line. I'm going to dot every I, and I'm going to cross every... See, he lying to himself. He can't play it straight. He can't. There's no point in me doing this if I can't be myself. <laughs> every time I try to do things someone else's way, it blows up in my face. That's what happened at Davis and Maine. Look how that turned out. I almost derailed your career, pissed everyone off. I've been trying to be the person someone else wants me to be for, I don't know how long. And at first it was Chuck, then it was you, and that's not your fault. That was my choice. But if we're gonna do this, I gotta go into it as me. So, yeah. Love that honesty. Colorful. I Colorful. Guess. At least you responded with honesty. What do you say? I don't see why it's so important to you that we work together. I mean, we're already. <laughs> Why do you need me for this? I don't need you. I want you. Double. You've got me. Yay! Just not as a law partner. I have to get back to work. Hey, at least that makes the relationship official. Okay. W and M. Yeah. Like. No. <laughs> fine. It hurts. It hurts. That's Come like on. the second rejection, man. With the big ass office. Come on, man. He presented her the whole room. <laughs> yeah. Listen, in it's that in, ready. in in that instance right there, I I I really kind of agree with uh it's tough. Like I I know why Saul's hurt. Uh, no, Jimmy's hurt. Why I've been calling him Jimmy. Why did I go back to Saul? Um, I know why Jimmy's hurt, but in that instance right there, I can see why Kim turned it down just because of the security of the offer, which Spiker and Cloak uh, Coakley. And um, it's too much of a risk at this point. Everyone's been dealt their hands. And yeah, Kim didn't want to take too much of a gamble right there. She didn't want to go all in and drop everything. Um, I think two years is a respectable time for her to see herself as, as partner, Schweiker and Coakley. And plus, at the same time, she hasn't even got the full offer from them yet. Like, she doesn't even know what they're presenting, what the salary is going to be, what the bonus is going to be, what the incentives are going to be. Obviously, one of, one of the incentives already is paying off the college um, and uh, law college loans. But you never know what Schweiker could present as well. Like, it could be a really, really handy offer right there. Um and it's interesting now to see where Jimmy is going to go, what path he's going to take. Because I was like curious, if Kim did take that, the potential for the legal battles ensuing would be crazy because they're potentially going to get clients of other people like Hamlin, Hamlin McGill, Schweiker, Davis and Maine. You never know, maybe employees from them and like it could be one crazy battle and jimmy acknowledges like if it ends up being a battle against those bigger law firms you cannot always play it straight it's gonna have to be colorful they're gonna play dirty and you're gonna have to play dirty back and i feel like that's sort of like teasing um the future legal battles that are gonna ensue in this show as you can see and they've renovated within the past three years new floors new kitchen and it's a good amount of space is there a pool though it's not too much house, do you think? No, not at all. And look at that backyard. They're leaving the playhouse. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. That's that. pretty cool, not gonna lie. But is there a pool? There. I know, right? Do you like it? If you're happy, I'm happy. Do you like it? <laughs> yeah, I do. But I'm. But what? It's a lot of money. I, I know, it. I'm like a broken record, but it is. You don't worry about that. We'll make it happen, whatever the cost. Mike. Hey, I'm serious. Not Money. Money's not an issue, Mike. <laughs> if you want it, it's yours. 
How are we looking? Oh, it's perfect. Let's do it. Fantastic. Do you have another hour? We could go down to the office, get the pre-approval in order, all that. Oh, sounds good. We'll meet you there. Sure. See you that, in a few. That's a smile of, um, I'm getting oh, a big I commission right there. Finally breathe. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> My guy knows his stuff. Thank you, Pop. <laughs> that that pop. I felt that pop. <laughs> You go on now. You don't know so what I'm involved in to do this shit. <laughs> this house is on the cartel. <laughs> is someone watching? No. <laughs> Bumblebee's back. <laughs> oh, is he bringing um the seven thousand dollar desk in? <laughs> Sorry, I almost lost you at that light. No problem. <laughs> Shout out Omar, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do this. Dump it on the side of the road. That's where I got it in the first place. <laughs> Why am I laughing? How about a drink? I know I could use one. Yeah. Come on, I'm buying. No, I'm good. Long drive. Cucumber water for the road? I'm, I'm totally set. Thank you. Gotta get home to my kids. You have kids? How about you? What are you gonna do now? What? I thought it was like a young I'm kid. Upward. Thanks, Omar. Drive safe. I love how he's still using the Davison main mug. <laughs> I wonder if he's gonna realize if Hello. he took that you job for granted. Of James M. McGill, Esquire. Kindly leave. Hi, you've reached the law offices of Jimmy McGill. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks. That guy, he's a handful, huh? Well, he can be a tough nut to crack, but he did rule in my favor. Mm -hmm. All right, enough about law, law, law. <laughs> we know you're good. We know you know your stuff. Tell us about Kim Wexler. You started in the mailroom, is that right? I did. I was there almost, uh, well, 10 years ago now. Pulled yourself up by your bootstraps. I like that. I see you went to UNM Law. Are you from New Mexico? Not originally. I'm from the Midwest, just a tiny little town barely on the map near the Kansas-Nebraska border. You've never heard of it. So what brought you here? That's I guess uh, one day I just looked around at my life, at who I was, and realized if I kept going the way I was going. Which way was that? Best case, probably married to the guy that ran the town gas station. <laughs> Maybe cashiering down at the Hinky Dinky. The Hinky what? Hinky Dinky. It was our supermarket. <laughs> um, I just wanted something else. What did you want? More. Well, thanks for coming by. Always a pleasure. Great to put a face to the name. Oh, thanks. We are going to put our heads together and discuss, but I feel safe to say that you can expect to hear from us by tomorrow at the latest. That's fantastic. I look forward to it. We liked you when you came in here. We like you more now. Well, thank you so much for taking the time, and I will uh, speak to you soon. It was great to meet you, Lynn. You too. Perry? Pleasure, Kim. Howard? It's Rich, actually. Oh my god, I'm so no, sorry. No, no, no. I'm happy to be confused with Howard. He's a damn good looking man. Don't worry about it. Oh, oh, come on, I'll walk you out. I, like, I, like, I was a bit sus before Kim stuffed up right there. Like, honestly, honest mistake with Howard because you're used to addressing the same boss for like 10 years and things like that. But I, I just, I got a different vibe from Rich right there from the meeting he was having with her at the dinner table. Obviously, um, I think the conversation they had uh, at the bar was a bit, like, you know, less less formal. Like, it was a more informal conversation. Like, they were vibing with each other. And I guess this time, um, it's, I think, in front of the other partners of the firm or, like, in front of, like, the more higher-ups of the firm. Um, and I just got different vibes from Rich right there. Like, he was asking her weird questions. I don't know if, like, 
her background didn't align with theirs. Maybe they come from an elite upper class and they don't, I don't, I, I don't, I, I might be reading too much into it, but I got just such a different vibe. Like, I just feel like you might be expecting to hear from us tomorrow, like in terms of a way, oh, like it does that's not a good hearing back tomorrow. Like we've made our decision already and we don't want you. Like, I, I don't, I don't, I feel like maybe Kim might take up that decision with Jimmy. I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm very curious to hear this response. Contemplating her life choices, I see. <laughs> I think she's just gonna go effort mode. Why not? Oh, no. No. Wait. Are we changing the logo up? You know, if you flip those over, it's WW. It's Walter White. Like, or Walt Whitman. Whatever you want. But like, <laughs> it is. <laughs> a meeting. A meeting? Have a seat. <laughs> And listen, I don't ever want to hear the word permit again, Capiche? <laughs> it's your funeral, dude. Hey, what are you doing here? Just in the neighborhood. Great. Oh, and I want a dolly this time. What kind? Western, hustler, peewee. Hey, watch your mouth around the lady. How the hell should I know? You're the nerd. Just make it cheap. <laughs> Go on, get out of here. <laughs> I love, like, the small cameos or, like, reappearances of characters that you don't think, like, they're going to show up again. And they just add a little bit, a little bit of humor. Like, these two are fantastic. The Vietnamese nail salon lady is fantastic. Like, it's just those little cameos so and appearances I like. Yeah, the kidney people wouldn't take it. What, you don't think it's a good idea now? Don't tell me you've changed your mind. No, I'm, I'm surprised is all. <laughs> hey, I, I said all along, you're too good for those clowns. I mean, this is uh, shit. Yeah. Wow. It's great. Good. To that end, I have a pitch for you. <laughs> Rolls reversed. <laughs> oh, she's going to say the same line about... Not Wexler McGill, but Wexler... And McGill. We find an office, share the housekeeping, cost the rent, electricity, everything. But I am Kim Wexler, attorney at law, and you are Jimmy McGill, attorney at law. Both free to practice as we see fit. Separate firms under one roof. We're both headed uptown, so why can't we share a taxi? You do things your way, <laughs> I do them mine. I love freedom. But and then we combine them we sometimes. Just trying to go it alone. Not partners, solo practitioners, together. What do you think? I don't know what to say. He's gonna say yes. He's gonna say yes, one hundred percent. This is a marriage proposal. Don't reject her. You're gonna leave me hanging like that, and like this is a situation. Where I'm not upset at the cliffhanger ending because. I'm legit gonna try and finish season two today, so it's all good. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy my reaction to Better Call Saul episode seven of season two. We cooking, baby. We cooking. Interestingly, no Chuck this episode. So yeah, I'm I, we're cook or Hamlin or Hamlin, but we cooking. Well, Hamlin was mentioned in name or Howard, Howard, Howard. Sorry, Howard was mentioned in name by accident. But yeah. Um, the show's cooking. I'm enjoying it. Hopefully you guys enjoying the reactions. As always, it's been your boy the Moses. Take care. God bless and peace.